What is going on? Thank you for tuning in and I hope you're doing well. Now after the last couple of videos getting out on the road, getting out of the collection room and going and hunting at toy fairs, in today's episode we're back in the collection room for more of a show and tell video but this isn't the average pickups video. Today I have an awesome box of vintage toys to go through that were very generously gifted to me by my good mates Matt and Andrew the two legends behind the awesome YouTube channel Keep On Collecting. I was absolutely blown away by these. I mentioned during our Canberra toy hunt video uh, when Matt and Andrew and myself checked out the Canberra Toy and Hobby Fair, I mentioned that the guys had surprised me with a birthday gift, a personal grail item, all wrapped up with an awesome card. I'm not gonna go through the card with you guys, but I do wanna make a point of showing you this really cool item that the guys have surprised me with. But they didn't stop there. When we went back to Andrews, the guys had like a, a handful of other items that they'd set aside for me that were in their collections that they no longer needed. And also there's an item here that I did a trade on with Matt. So I can't thank the boys enough. Uh, Matt and Andrew, two of my good mates, completely unexpected, absolutely blown away. And it just speaks to the generosity of these guys. Uh, I don't want to waste any time. I want to get straight into these items. But obviously, if you've watched Matt and Andrew on YouTube, you'll know that they're tremendous guys. Um, but you know that the kindness and generosity and uh, friendliness it, it goes well beyond their presence on their videos um, I, I just can't speak highly enough about the guys but look let's go through these items alrighty first up we're gonna look at the item that the boys sprung on me for my birthday and I'm talking about the beautiful colorful vintage TMNT pizza thrower. Now I tease that this is a personal grail for me and I don't mean that because it's the most expensive item that I would have needed to save for months and months or longer to get in the collection or because it's like a super rare white whale that we search years for hoping to stumble across it like a rare variant or like a, a rare late wave figure or vehicle or playset or anything like that. I just I mean it because of the personal sentimental connection that I have with the pizza thrower. If you had have asked a six-year-old Scott Crusher in 1990 who was absolutely obsessed with Ninja Turtles, if you had have asked me at that age, what, you know, if I could have anything from the vintage TM until it wasn't vintage then obviously, but anything from the Ninja Turtles line in the late 80s or early 90s, I would have actually picked out this item. Now, thinking about it, I don't know if that's because I wasn't aware of the Technodrome playset and the sewer playset, or if it was just the fact that like as a kid when you're six, seven, any opportunity when you're at a shopping center with your parents, you'll run into a toy store and have a look around. Maybe I wasn't seeing it on toy store shelves, whereas I was seeing this all over the place, or maybe I just knew better than to put an item like the Technodrome or the sewer playset on the Christmas wish list, and I just knew it was out of reach. But this was the big thing from the Turtles line that I always wanted as a kid. And, and this was the item that always eluded me as a kid. You know, I, I had a whole bunch of Ninja Turtle figures, uh, you know, in 1989, 1990, 1991. I had the smaller vehicles like the Sewer Cycle and the uh, Sewer Seltzer gun, but, but this was what I always wanted. And, and I remember vividly playing with this toy with a school mate uh, after school or on weekends, been at his place and just absolutely having a ball launching pizzas out of this thing and it's it's beautifully complete i mean the guys haven't just found the nearest pizza thrower because you do see these things fairly often but i don't know that i've actually seen one at all in this kind of condition the colors are amazing there's no yellowing there's no fading there's no marks or stains it's in beautiful condition it's complete we've got the awesome seat that looks like the open pizza box um we've got the awesome like pizza oven section uh, most of the decals are still really, you know, in really, really nice shape. I love kind of the, the bottom half looks a bit like a tank, but it's got these awesome manhole cover wheels. It's just beautiful. Most of the decals are in the, intact, but even though the decals are in really nice condition, I can only spot one missing decal. And that's if I look closely, like you'll see, in fact, two, I'm lying to you. There's a slice of pizza here. I believe there should be a slice of pizza there. And obviously, the flag post is missing the flag decal, but the guys have actually gone and got me a replacement sticker sheet as well. Now, 
I'm not going to go and pull all these. So there's a few stickers here that are peeling at the edges. I'm not going to go pull them off and replace them. I get a bit funny about like replacing vintage stickers unless they really need it or they're missing. But what I will certainly do is apply those missing decals and I'll, I'll get some, I'll get a close up look at the artwork for the box and just make sure any of those stick, any of these stickers that I don't have uh, are on there. But I'm blown away with the condition of this. This thing is absolutely beautiful. And yeah, like I said, it might sound weird that as a kid who was obsessed with the turtles, that the Technodrome or the sewer playset wasn't all the way up on my list. It was just the fact that I was exposed to this pizza thrower. I remember seeing the commercials. I remember seeing it in toy stores. I played with my mate's version of it. We had an absolute ball. And, and so this was the item that I always wanted. I didn't get it when I was six or seven. 30 years later though, we have it. And I can't forget the arsenal of choice, the weaponry of the pizza thrower. We have 12 pizzas, all with stickers in beautiful condition. So we've got six of each. If you're not aware, the pizza thrower comes with 12 pizza discs and six of them are all decaled up as like your traditional pepperoni and mushroom. And then we've got six of the, the more controversial choice. I know some people refute the idea of pineapple on a pizza. Personally, I love pineapple on a pizza, but I don't know if I'd like an ice cream sundae with cherries on a pizza. That, that's, that's a bizarre one, but obviously remember from the Ninja Turtles animated series that they used to have all sorts of weird and wonderful toppings on a pizza. And listen, I'm not gonna hate it until I try it, so I'm gonna have all sorts of fun with this. Um, I've thrown some batteries in here. Now, obviously I wanna test it for you guys. I'm not gonna be able to do it properly because the collection room is an absolute mess, but I have thrown some batteries in here and I'm pleased to report that it is working brilliantly. So if we turn it on, the motor just runs continuously. I'm not gonna leave it on because it's super noisy. Motor goes on. Pizza disc in. All right, take two. The dog has absolutely shit herself, so sorry, Nala. I seem to have a stuck disc stuck, so let's try that again. Maybe it's because it wasn't 100% flat. But the disc goes in. You know what, Let me, let's get a few in there. I'll have to search for them later. Motor goes on. All right, it turns out, I don't know, I have no idea how I've done this, but it turns out that I've, that I've jammed two pizzas in there, like one on top of the other. So, ugh, I mean, this thing is designed for a six-year-old to use, so I don't really know how a 38-year-old has seemed to fuck this up, but take 10 and I'm gonna get this going. All right, guys, 10 minutes later, I've managed to unjam this thing. I don't know what's going on here. I mean, I've waited like the best part of 30 years to play with this thing again, and somehow, I put the first pizza in, it didn't quite come out straight, so then I just kept putting more pizzas in, and next minute it was completely jammed. I've unjammed it, then I've uh, tested a pizza and it's almost gone through the Jiprock wall. So I, I'm pleased to confirm that the thing does work. At the risk of putting another hole in my wall, I'm just gonna try it one more time just to show you guys, and let's hope it does what it's supposed to here. So motor's on. There we go, all right. Enough of that. My dog has run through the doggy door and I don't think she's coming back in anytime soon, but anyway, there it is. Tested and working. Matt, Andrew, thank you very much, boys. I'm absolutely stoked with this thing. I just love it. I mean, the detail's beautiful. The decals are incredible. We've got the works on the license plate. We've got this pizza oven being fed by these like big barrels here with ingredient decals like pepperoni and sausage. I mean, there's just so much, so much here to enjoy. But then obviously we've got the jelly beans and uh, you know all sorts of weird stuff. The whipped cream. So that's where the that's where the Sunday comes in. This is awesome, man. I'm so pumped with this. I can't wait to get it on display. I can't wait to uh, create a safe environment in which to test this. The sticker on here about please don't you please don't shoot at people or animals that's legit this is the kind of toy that they just couldn't make now like no word of a lie i reckon this thing would shoot 15 feet like it, it comes out at an incredible force listen ninja vintage ninja turtles figures have trouble have enough trouble standing up at the best of times it would take no force to um to knock them down you could stand 
20 up next to one another and this thing would take them all out with a single pizza. That is awesome. Stoked with the pizza thrower. Like I said, I just I need to just give this a little dust. There's maybe one or two replacement decals, including the, or as well as the flagpole up here. And this then this thing's gonna be display ready. So Matt, Andrew, thank you once again so much for this. I can't wait to get it on display. But for now, I'm gonna switch it off and safely put it to one side and then we'll go through the other items in this awesome gift box. Alrighty, next up we pivot from Playmates Toys to Kenner with an awesome vintage Robin Hood figure. Now, if you've watched my last couple of videos, you know that I'm hunting down the vintage Robin Hood line. Uh, at the Canberra show a few weeks back, I got every figure except for Friar Tuck, some near complete, some completely incomplete. And then, um, and then last time around at Collecticon, I picked up a, a complete longbow Robin Hood, and then I also picked up Fry Tuck with his cloak. So I'm getting there. I've got every figure just with the exception of um, some accessories and, and the soft cloth goods. Obviously, I mentioned to Matt that I'm collecting the line. So when I pick up, you know, these other items, there's a Robin Hood figure. Not just, not just a loose, incomplete Robin Hood figure. Not even a loose, complete Robin Hood figure. He's gone and hooked me up with a carded little John figure. And this is awesome. I mean... Uh, you'll know if you watch my channel, if you know if you've got eyes and you can see what's going on behind me. I love loose, complete vintage action figures, but it is always, there's something special about having carded figures. Even if it's just one carded figure from a loose line that you collect, just to show how the, how awesome these things looked on the store shelves, on the racks back in the day, and this thing looks awesome. I love the card art. Um, obviously, very reminiscent of the film with the logo. We've got the live image of Little John. And Little John, what an awesome character. I mean, growing up, I love Robin Hood. My kind of um, perception, my experience of Robin Hood as a kid was more from the Disney version of Robin Hood, watching that um, as a young fella. Um, but the character of Little John is is always awesome. And, and this character and, and figure just makes me think of that awesome bridge crossing scene with Little John and Robin going at it. But this is awesome. Um, we've got, obviously got a beautiful clean carded figure here. And and with, the, with these vintage Robin Hood figures, the, the soft goods, the cloaks, the capes, uh, the ponchos, they, they definitely do deteriorate. So it's just another reason why it's awesome to have a carded, and obviously they get lost first and foremost by kids. That's all the more reason why it's awesome to have just a carded version here to show how cool these look. Love the cross sell on the back. Now, obviously the, Ro the Kenneth Robin Hood line was just like a, a mishmash of superpowers, and Star Wars bits, all Frankenstein together, but it's still a line that I love, so. I'm really happy to have this carded Robin Hood figure in the collection, gonna display beautifully behind the loose figures. So uh, Matt, thank you very much for that one, mate. That is greatly appreciated. I thought we were done with Playmates toys, but we weren't. Um, we've got a, an awesome addition to the Dick Tracy collection here. And it's this beautiful shoulders figure, AKA Frank Shoulders Foley, I believe is this gentleman's name. And uh, I'm really enjoying collecting the vintage uh, Dick Tracy line. Um, completely different to other things that I collect. I didn't necessarily grow up on the 1990 Dick Tracy film, but I can certainly enjoy it as an adult. You know, the color palettes, the bizarre makeup effects, um, the gritty street settings, but illuminated in kind of weird pastel bright colors. It's definitely a fun film to me. And I think Playmates captured the styling of the uh, characters with these figures really nicely. So we've got a cool shoulders figure here. Love that teal and purple color combo. Don't let the teal and purple fool you. These are bad boys. And uh, Shoulders comes with his Tommy gun. An awesome Tommy gun accessory. Now, I had a I had an extra Tramp, Steve the Tramp figure. For whatever reason, when I'm, when I'm out about looking for Dick Tracy figures, I find Dick Tracy all the time and I find the Tramp all the time. So I had a couple of Tramps, um, one complete in my collection, but the other one was, I think, just missing one accessory. He was just about complete. And, uh, and Matt didn't have the tramp, but he had an extra shoulders for me. So we did a little trade for that. Always love um, trades to help one another complete your collection. So really happy to now have shoulders in the collection. Look forward to getting him on display with the other goons from Dick Tracy. Next up, we're talking about a toy line that I've been talking about a lot lately on this channel. And that's Mighty Max with another Mighty Max Doom Zone set that Andrew hooked me up with. This is Mighty Max Terminates Wolfship 7. And this set's awesome. It opens up, obviously like all of the Mighty, or not all of them, but like most of the Mighty Max, it's got that standard format. So we've got the vertical play area and we've got the ground floor. We've got three minifigures and then we've got some other cool elements going on. So this, this Wolfship 7 
set is complete. We've got Mighty Max, and we've got two of these awesome aliens, which are mad. These kind of look like Xenomorphs, but with this awesome blue paint deco with red eyes. And what's really cool is it would have been like it would have been really easy for Bluebird Toys just to make these the exact same sculpt. But as they did with this whole Mighty Max line, they really went above and beyond. They're two different sculpts. And, uh, and then we've also got some other cool stuff. We've got like this escape pod. So when you open up the wolf, the fangs are revealed to be this awesome little escape pod that has Max's feet sculpted to the bottom so he can get away. And then we've also got these articulated, uh, like the wolf's ears are kind of articulated into these wings that swing out. And there's tons of like articulated guns and other little elements going on. Now I find this Mighty Max Doom Zone set quite interesting and quite different to most of them because with a lot of the other Mighty Max Doom Zone sets that we looked at in that review video like Skull Dungeon, Trapped by Arachnoid, what goes on on the outside gives you a really clear clue as to what's going on on the inside. You've got a spider on the outside so you've got like a spider monster laboratory going on on the inside for instance in the case of Mighty Max Trapped by Arachnoid but most of them follow that format where what's going on on the outside you can pretty much guess what's going on on the inside, at least to a certain extent. This one's kind of bizarre. It's called Mighty Max Terminates Wolf Ship 7. Obviously, on, on the outside, to me, it just looks like a straight-up wolf. Obviously, uh, a little bit different, though, with the guns coming out here and, like, the turbine engines. But when you open up, there's really nothing wolf-like going on. It's, it's a straight-up, like, futuristic spaceship uh, setting going on on the inside. Um, with these wild aliens and this escape pod and guns and all sorts of stuff. So... I'm not quite sure where the wolf ties in, apart from the fact that the ship is in the shape of a wolf, but still a really awesome set. And uh, and now, you know, Andrew once again helping me with another Doom Zone for the collection, and I feel like I'm doing pretty good of um, ticking off a lot of these Doom Zone playsets. I mentioned in my Mighty Max video that I'm not crazy about the larger Mighty Max playsets, like they they are really awesome. There's tons of detail. Listen, if they're out there and I can find them in nice condition, relatively complete for a reasonable price, I'm gonna pick them up. I, I'm not saying I don't I, I don't want them for the collection, but to me the Doom Zones are where it's at because there's so much play value, there's so much going on, there's fun display scenarios, but they as a kid they fit in your pocket and they don't take up too much space in the collection room, which is um. You know, which space counts. So really happy to have yet another Doom Zone in the collection. Thanks to Andrew with this Mighty Max Terminates Wolf Ship 7. Alrighty, a little story, a little context before we get into these next couple of items. And this is the awesome thing about having uh, fellow collectors within your social circle. When I first started collecting Mighty Max, I was talking to Andrew about Mighty Max. He wasn't super familiar with the line. Um, Andrew knows so many vintage toy lines. Andrew's forgotten more vintage toy lines than I know about, let's just say that. Um, but I was talking to him about Mighty Max and he wasn't super familiar with it. And he said to me, oh, is that that toy line where it's all body parts, different parts of the human anatomy that open up into different play sets? And I said, no, but that sounds awesome. And, uh, and he said, oh, okay, that's what I thought Mighty Max was. Anyway, I'm browsing on eBay for Mighty Max and I stumble across a toy line that Maybe the seller thought was Mighty Max, so they had, you know, that advertised it accordingly, or maybe the seller just knew that people who were interested in this would also like Mighty Max. And I'm talking about Body Wars. I've got a couple of awesome Body Wars sets that Andrew had in his collection, which he no longer wanted. And I absolutely love these things. So I've seen a few of them. I've seen like a beautiful looking skull that opens up with projectiles that come out the eyes of the skull called the Skull Scanner. And that's one that I'm trying to find. Uh, but I wasn't familiar with this one. This, this one's really cool. This one's called the Eye Eliminator. And when you, so when you open them up, they're way less detailed and way, way less, there's way less play uh, features compared to the Mighty Max sets, but they're still really cool. Um, so essentially all the Body Wars sets and Body Wars made by Toy Max, it's a toy line that I don't really know too much about. I know Toy Max have done trolls uh, in the past, in the 90s and some other stuff. But uh, I'm loving these. I'm loving these body war sets. So essentially, there's about maybe six to eight of them in the toy line, and uh, they, they they're all essentially a piece of anatomy that opens up with three figures inside: a good guy and two bad guys. Obviously, a common thread with Mighty Max. Um, and this particular set here is missing the good guy. So this one's called the Eye Eliminator, and this this the good guy is something like 
Colonel Mighty Sight or, or something like that, or Captain Mighty Sight, and he comes with two bad guys called the Eye Assassins. And uh, essentially, you've got a really simple playset, very little going on apart from a few decals. All of the Body War sets have like a missile launcher here, and when you close it up, you know the yeah, it comes with like little projectiles that you can shoot through the hole here. And these these are I mean I'm assuming they're eyeballs. So I'm missing I'm missing them, and I'm missing Captain Mighty Sight. But these are still going to display awesome because these playsets are pretty simple on the inside. I will most likely display these ones closed as opposed to the Mighty Max um, sets where I really want to open them up and display them to show off all the cool stuff going on inside. But where the Body Wars sets lack a little bit of detail on the inside, so much sculpting and paint detail going on the outside. So that's probably how I will display these. So I'm loving this. Like when I, when I worked out what Andrew was talking about and I said to him, oh, no, 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 what you're talking about is Body Wars. Mighty Max is different. Uh, Body Wars, obviously, I would imagine, influenced by Mighty Max, came out in 1994, so a couple of years after Mighty Max, when Mighty Max was still on its run. I said, Andrew, if you don't want them, man, I want to buy them off you um, because they sound friggin' awesome. So really happy to have the Eye Eliminator Body Wars set from 1994 Toy Max in the collection. And then, like I mentioned, we've got another one as well. And this one's called the, I want to say like Dijo Digest Destroyer or Digi Destroyer, something like that. I guess we've got like a piece of stomach or intestine here. And this one opens a little bit differently. This one's got, got two hinges. So this one actually opens front ways. And once again, very, very simple on the inside. Not a heck of a lot going on there, apart from some pretty cool looking decals. And obviously that same missile launcher concept there. And once again, we're missing the good guy. I can't remember the good guy's name here, but once again, it's like a military title with a, a name that relates to what's going on here. I can't quite remember. And then we've got the two bad guys here and the two bad guys for the Daijo Destroyer. A little flu bugs, they're called. And they're awesome. The figures have a lot of cool sculpting detail, just like Mighty Max minifigures. Really, really cool. And... Um, yeah man, it's always fun when you discover a new vintage toy line and you start getting into it. And I'm really happy with these Body Wars, so definitely going to be on the hunt for the rest of them. Like I mentioned, there's the Skull one, which is the Skull Scanner. You've got a Brain one, and uh, you've got a Heart. Uh, and then there might be one more. I'm not too sure, but definitely looking forward to hunting down more of the Body Wars playsets by Toy Max. So thank you very much, Andrew, for kicking off my Body Wars collection. And we finish things off with a little bit of wrestling action. Much like myself, Matt is really into 80s and 90s wrestling. Uh, he knows I'm trying to put together a collection of VHS tapes for the pay-per-view uh, WWF events from 1988 to 1995 and help me tick off another one from 1995. And it's this awesome King of the Ring tape. It's an X-Rental tape. We can tell because it's got the genre tag there. It's got like a little bit of discoloration where there would have been an actual rental price sticker there. So always nice to have an X rental version. But unlike a lot of the X rental versions I'm picking up, this one's in beautiful condition. I can get, I mean, look, I can't tell for certain because it can always be hiding, but this one looks to be 100% mold free. So I'm happy about that. It's got this awesome sticker on top of the, t of the spool window saying this video has been cleaned and serviced by Eight, uh, by RTI tape check to maintain picture and sound. That's that's awesome. So really happy to have another 1995 WWF VHS tape in the collection. King of the Ring, not one of the flagship WWF pay-per-views of the of the 80s and 90s. Not exactly on the level of WrestleMania, SummerSlam, Survivor Series, or the Royal Rumble, but at least to my memory as a wrestling fan in the early 90s, a fun addition to the calendar, a different format with the Elimination Tournament. And uh, and look, I can definitely tell, like looking at the uh, match list here, this is where I start to get out of wrestling. I definitely would have watched this back in the day, uh, but the 1995 King of the Ring Tournament is made up of Mabel, The Undertaker, Karma, Shawn Michaels, Bob Holly, The Roadie, Razor Ramon, R.I.P., and, uh, and Yokozuna. So still a few very major faces there of my childhood era of wrestling with The Undertaker, Shawn Michaels, Razor Ramon, and Yokozuna. 
Um, but yeah, some of these new faces that I, I wasn't so into as a kid. And then the main event is the champion, the WWF champion defending his title again. Oh, sorry, I'm lying to you. It's the WWF champion Diesel teaming up with Bam Bam Bigelow to take on Sid and Tatanka. So a bit of an odd uh, match up there, but, um, but that's awesome. Uh, at some stage, I'm sure I'm going to watch this. Matt and I have been floating the idea of having a show that we work on together where we look at some, um, you know, we look at some WWF pay-per-view events and offer our thoughts on those. And uh, I'm looking forward to that. So Matt, thank you very much, mate. Really happy to have another awesome 90s WWF VHS for the collection. And that is about it. So uh, look, I've said thank you a million times already. I've spruiked the boys that keep on collecting a million times already. Go and check them out. Like I said, to watch their videos, you see how how just genuinely awesome those boys are. Um, but their generosity and their kindness goes well beyond what you see on the videos. So definitely go and check those out. Check those guys out. Give them a sub and keep an eye out for the live streams that I'm doing with Matt and Andrew and also Ryan from the YouTube channel Ryan the Collector Kid. And look, to wrap things up, I'm just going to make the point that. And look, it sounds kind of weird when I say this, but this is exactly why I got into making YouTube videos. I, please, I don't mean that I got into making YouTube videos because I wanted to get cool stuff, like gifted to me by my friends, which are awesome. I just mean that like before I started making videos on YouTube, I was absolutely loving collecting. I was having a ball collecting. But my circle of friends, none of them shared that same interest. I'd have mates that would come around to my place all the time and like have a quick squeeze at my collection and be like, oh, that's cool. I remember that from when I was a kid, but... It's different when you don't when, when you don't have mates to um you know to go along to toy fairs with or go along to cons to and um, do trades with and just you know deep dive into your passions together and just chat about this stuff for ages. Um, you know one of the reasons, like I said, that I, I started a channel in the first place was because I wanted to try and either kind of work my way into a community or, or, or maybe build a small community around me. And I'm having an absolute ball doing that through making these YouTube videos. So. I'm going to leave it there. Thank you so much for watching. Obviously, first and foremost, thank you very much to Matt and Andrew for being awesome and to um, you know for helping me add some beautiful items to my collection that I'm absolutely stoked with. Uh, but also, thanks so much to you guys for watching. Hope to hear from you in the comments as always. Um, keep an eye out for, for, for the next batch of videos. They, they are in the works, as are the live streams that I'm doing with Matt, Andrew, and Ryan, some of which are going to be on this channel some of which are going to be on their channels. Keep on collecting and Ryan the Collector Kid. Check them out. But that's it for today. Thanks again. Hit me up in the comments. Let me know if you had any of these items as a kid. Let me know if you collect Body Wars because I'm yet to meet anyone else that collects Body Wars. Uh, but that's it, guys. Thanks again. And until next time, cheers.